Hello, viewers from all around the world. This is the Melting Pot, and I am your host, Izo Izo. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're welcome to the show. Our esteemed viewers, we want to thank you for sticking with us, even though last week we had a lot of glitches for or foreseen circumstances. We're here again to give you a wonderful moment of conversation and fun. And as always, I am not alone. I am joined by my sisters. I have Savi and AY all the way from Ontario. And I have my very own Amen MC Blank here in Saskatoon. How are you ladies? I'll start with Savi. How are you? <laughs> this is why you're putting your hand oh, on your jaw. What is the matter? <laughs> Oh, I'm doing great. It's been a really beautiful weather and I can smell summer. Hope you are doing great as well. Not spring, you are smelling summer. Okay, that's even better. I'm doing summer park. <laughs> AY, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Um, enjoying the day so far. Wonderful. And MC Blank, how are you? How yes. is Saskatoon fitting? Oh, I think my voice is a little bit husky because I just came back from an MC job. So I'm having fun. Yes, and the weather is so good. Good for pictures too. Oh, yeah. Happy. yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a wonderful weather today in Saskatoon. The type of weather that I wore a sleeveless top and I was like, mm. hmm, that's a novelty Ooh. for April. <laughs> so I'm jealous. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was surprised because I was like, April sleeveless? Oh, God, give it to me. So before we go on yeah. to the other news, I know something very remarkable is going to be happening in North America, uh, parts of Canada and the U.S., and I'm talking about the solar eclipse. So I will start from, uh, I like starting from Savi. I don't know why. Maybe it's this already. <laughs> I don't know. Every time, every time. It's you, every time. So I'll start from you and then go to Amem and then AY. So what's, what, what are you preparing? Is it going to be the end of the world? <laughs> or you just going to do, God, I beg. What, what are your thoughts? <laughs> In, interestingly, this evening, my daughter was telling me that the last one happened over 50 years ago. And it's something that everyone is really excited about. I know people that came to Canada, you know, they book one of my friends and be just because they want to watch this. I mean, it's really, really a big deal. And even in Ontario, people are really excited. You know, they will just want to see what it looks like. Have it. Please don't look at the sun straight tomorrow. Try and get the glasses if you want to watch it. But I think it's really going to be a beautiful sight to see. Fantastic. Amen. I know we're not having, uh, I think we're having partial eclipse here in Saskatoon. But what's your take? I heard that it's rapture tomorrow, and uh, <laughs> if you go on TikTok, <laughs> on TikTok, it's really crazy. There, you see some people trying to, you know, go off, and some people are bringing them, and they slap them. Leave me alone! I mean, you don't want to go off. But uh, my my consolation is the fact that the, you know the word of God says that nobody knows when it's gonna happen. So all of you, <laughs> it's not gonna happen tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, anyway. <laughs> I know you are Ontario, and it's going to be a full eclipse for for you guys tomorrow. Any special plans? Are you taking the day off work, or what are you doing? Hey, why? I wish I could take the day off. Unfortunately, <laughs> I work from home, so we don't count. <laughs> so I think the most we 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 were advised to do is to just try to stay away from the windows, um, pull your blinds down, try not to look straight into the. If you're going to be outside, try not to look straight into the sky. And they're mm -hmm. potentially looking at around two o'clock for this to happen. So coincidentally, the kids in my own region are home tomorrow. So okay. I think maybe that was strategic so the kids can be indoors. Um, I like the excitement. I like the craziness of it. Um, hopefully the, it doesn't end. I never already, Baba God. I'm not, I've not blown yet. <laughs> <laughs> So Don't you want to have blow it? <laughs> Let me spend some of the Emily money down here face. 
but yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. So we'll see. All right, we'll see ladies, we'll I'm going to, because I think we can talk about this eclipse forever, but we need to go to the other news. So viewers, uh, our lines are open as always to be part of the family. You have to subscribe to the channel. And if you're just tuning in, you're welcome. We'll go on a short break and we will be right back with the other news. Don't go anywhere. This is the other news. We had this last week, but we think that there's need for us to still talk about it. So Toronto moves over new stormwater fee amid residents' concern over rising water bills. Canada to introduce a rentals bill of rights. So ladies, we talked on this a bit last last week, but we're going to shed more light. So for the storm water, I'm just going to pass the ball to my sisters in Ontario because it's not affecting us, thank God, but we are with you. So I'm not going to go to Savvy this time. Savvy, your lipstick is not going to get I, me. I I'm going to go me. to <laughs> AY. <laughs> so AY. You go. <laughs> so the stormwater bill, aka the rain tax. <laughs> um, I see the reason why they're trying to do it, but do we need more taxes to be taken out of us? Why are we switching this from a bill to a tax? So the backstory mm. of this storm water thing is most areas in canada ontario specifically have a lot of storm and water accumulates in paved area which ends up flooding basements and so on and so forth so they're trying to instill this 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 money already comes out in our water bill or our utility bill so they're shifting it now to a tax where if you have more paved area surrounding your house, you pay more. And if you have less paved area in your surrounding, you pay less. Now, mm -hmm. I know Ontario is really, you know, pushing for it, but we're not the first. Philadelphia in the US has this already. So do I want to pay more money? Obviously, no. But it's what it is. We're in a country that creates all those things and they are the only one that has the reason for it so i'll pass it to i'm tired yeah. of paying tax anyway so i'll pass it to <laughs> <laughs> the entire me <laughs> yeah i know interestingly the argument is that ultimately we'll be paying lesser because as it is they removed the um stop water from our current water bill we are supposed to have the the um the bill reduced by 25 percent so I'm wondering, is the math still going to math, right? After maybe 25%, I hope that the new um, stormwater tax or rain tax or whatever it's, it's being called is not going to amount to um, over 25% of what people are currently paying. Because if we are, then I do not see us winning this, right? The masses are not winning. The people are not the one winning this ultimately. So we'll see. We'll see what happens yeah interesting we'll see hopefully it works out well for ed everyone so if you want more information on that google is your friend there are so many news channels that have carried in here in canada uh, i'm going to go to the next news item which is the rental bill of rights and for that it is something that the Ghanaian go the canadian government is introducing to help house owners that are renting now we have homeowners that bought the houses but these ones are for those renting so that if you're a newcomer to Canada, you already have a history of what the rent is and your the, the landlord cannot pull the rug under your feet. And also it can help you with some credit facility so that when you're filing your taxes, you get some stuff back. So it's all good on paper. I hope that it turns out for the benefit because sometimes these things is good on paper, but when it plays out, uh in reality 
it comes to bite the person back. So I, I hope that all of this news item would favor the average Canadian, because as you know, there are lots of bills, bills, bills in Canada. Uh, and I don't think we need more bills. So <laughs> I know there's more other news, more interesting, not this boring ones. So I'm going to pass it on to AY. I know you have a very interesting other news. AY, take it away. Yay. So <clears throat> my news is regarding a very beautiful young lady named Palumi Nubi that embarked on a journey from London to Lagos with her small Peugeot car. Um, what interests me about Palumi's story is she was actually at a younger age diagnosed with dyslexia. So she was already a child that's growing up with a lot of things against her. So planning this, as she said, for a whole year to do the drive, you know, through all these different parts of the country. She arrived in Nigeria this morning around 10 a.m., which was so beautiful to watch. You know, when Lagos wants to support you, when Nigeria wants to support you, they go all out. So she was met at the Seme Boda with beautiful cultural talking drums, um, commissioner of um, tourism, um, commissioner of youths in Lagos. Um, her father also is a professor at the Unilag. So Unilag was a big, um, was a big welcome committee for her. I, I'm, I'm, I followed the story from the day. So she had left London um, January 23rd. What just strikes me in this journey was she did not have issues until she arrived the continent of Africa. That's a bigger story. That's a bigger conversation that we can have today. But land crossing was really, really difficult for her. She even got into an accident where the car was totaled. Luckily, there were great mechanics that was able to patch it up until she got to Nigeria. But there's a fun fact to this. The first person that made this journey, Mr. Newton, made this journey over 56 years ago. He was the, the, the first man that drove London to Lagos. And he did it 56 years ago and he did it four different times or five different times. So he flew to Lagos to welcome her also. And it was so beautiful when he said uh -huh. he has passed the torch over to her where she can continue oh, to do it. And she is a um, travel content creator. So she's been to other mm -hmm. parts of the world, but this is the first time of this okay. long drive. I'm excited for her. I'm excited to see what will come out of this. People are already um, tagging Pijo that they need to give her an endorsement. You know, I want to see what Lagos will do to this. Will they, you know, will they put the car in the museum? All of these things. But I, I'm oh, all about the girl nice. child. <laughs> I'm all about that. You know, I'm all about the girl child. And her mantra was, a girl can do it. A, a female mm -hmm. can do the unthinkable. A, a, a girl child can um, push the boundaries, irrespective of, you know, medical um, diagnosis, yes. disability, or anything. So... Mm -hmm. Um, you can look her up online. Her name is Bellumi dot newbie on on Instagram. She has a YouTube channel now that shows all the different parts of the countries that she visited, their food, the culture, and all of that. So it was very beautiful, and I'm excited for her. Um, it was really I stayed up watching this, so I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, we can. That's go. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I don't need News only, I only saw, uh, I can't remember which West African country she was, where she had issues crossing the border. And I was Liberia. like, oh my God. Yeah. This lady has been coming all the way from two days. Uh, London without an issue and then eventually had to deal with this. But we are very happy and glad and we congratulate her for doing that. I really do hope that they put the car in the museum because these things... You don't feel the weight of it until years have passed. And yes. then generations to come see it and they're like, wow. And they touch it and it's yep. some kind of hollow ground. So I really hope they do that. Um, I also know that, amen, <laughs> you're batting your eyelid. I know you have. <laughs> I know you have another interesting one. So I can't wait to hear your other news. Go ahead, amen. My goodness, on a very, 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 very light note, <laughs> Portable <laughs> releases this track to Bob Risky. Director, take it away. Hey. Mm -hmm. Happy love for brotherhood. 
If it pops through my hood, if it blooms in my hood, you go show her your hood. Hey, look up, ba, hey, look up, ba. You are my brotherhood. Oh my God! <laughs> From brotherhood to brotherhood, oh fellow joy is sisterhood. Love I'm on, my own. You are this place to brotherhood. You are my brotherhood. I would be Bobby Rizky, oh. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> gotta love portable okay, so you have to love portable <laughs> when i saw the, the the video i was like what's going on so it happened that bob risky had won best dressed female at um, the premiere of the movie at jakaju which was produced by Eniola Ajao. Now, this um, seemed to have caused some uproar and people attacked Bob Risky for it and wondered why he was, where, um, you know, why he won that award. Um, actually, after the backlash, Eniola did confirm that it was just a joke and she just wanted to use it to promote her movie. But you see, Portable wasn't having it. Portable felt um, he needed to chime in. So, and he called... Um, Bob Risky, unprintable names. They had this back and forth, and he allegedly said that Bob Risky was, you know, into some very interesting, colorful activities. Well, um, why it's so funny is because right after the problem, another activist or self acclaimed activist called Very Dark Man came out of prison and decided to address this issue again now the thing with very dark man is he's someone who talks about every issue and any issue and he felt the need to talk about bob risky's um award and in his um rant and everything as at that time bob risky was at, um, arrested for um misusing or abusing the naira note which seems to be is actually against the law to spray naira notes at a party so he was arrested by the efcc um for mutilation of the naira note and after his arrest very dark man came out to say that he would prefer that bob Risky stays in cell you know stays back in jail and whoever it is that were his big shots, the people behind him, whoever they were, that they should stay away from him because he was going to spill a lot of things. Now, it's quite disturbing because at first, people thought that Bob Risky was going to be arrested for um, cross-dressing. But the thing is that in Nigeria, cross-dressing is not a crime, okay? So they decided to arrest him for Naira mutilation. Um, but presently, Bob Risky is out of jail. Obviously, he's got some big shots that know how to fight for him and bring him out because he's a very um, important citizen to Nigeria. So, yeah, that's it on Bob Risky. What do you guys think? <laughs> important <laughs> citizen to Nigeria. Oh, yes. Well, this is my take. I think this is this all the all these events is one of those that you tell yourself, I will just watch and see how far this goes because. Uh, when it started initially, it was just uh, Portable and Brobisky, and then from nowhere, Very Dark Man entered into the mix. So <laughs> my arms are, watch, uh, are crossed. I'm holding my popcorn, and I'm watching and waiting. That's my take on it. <laughs> Someone All right, ladies, thank about... you so much. Someone mentioned on... Some someone mentioned something on Instagram regarding all of this that if he's truly, um, I'm not citing anyone, but if he was truly put in jail for naira mutilation, that all 20 million people that goes to party every weekend in Nigeria <laughs> just need to go and submit themselves at the police station because at this point they are all guilty. They're if all truly guilty. it is all about right. the spending right. money in um, and this is um Paul Okoye, um Paulo, he's a very famous um concert pr producer in nigeria so he's a big shot and he put it on his page he said including him himself let him now come back and just that they should just say you know what they're really holding him for but that was I, I found that very interesting that if that's what they're holding him for then maybe all of us should just go and submit ourselves 
Okay, thank you very much, ladies, for the other news. Uh, very interesting topics. The conversation continues as always. Um, you can call into the show. You can drop your comments on our YouTube handles. We'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be hearing relationship tips from our love coach. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining me again on the IBIS Love Corner. How are you doing? How are you investing in that marriage? How are you investing in that relationship? My name is Coach Ibis, and reaching marriages and strengthening relationships. Today, I want to talk about moving on. We all want to run away from those challenges. We want to run away from those marital problems, those relationship problems, I understand. I mean, how can you be singing and there will be no one dancing to the music? How can you be cracking jokes and there will be no one laughing to those jokes? You get tired. How can you be investing and your partner is not reciprocating? I understand. But I want to ask you, are you moving on to become a priority or are you moving on to become an option? You can agree with me that moving on does not always equate moving better. Sometimes we move on, we move better, and sometimes we move on, we move worse. You can agree with me that recently nobody is willing to fight again. Be it male, be it female, we don't want to go to war again. We want to just go and start a new life. I mean, it's very frustrating, right? When one party is doing all it takes to keep the marriage together and your spouse is not investing that same energy, you will get tired. But hey, if you move on from this, do you know the challenges that would confront you where you're going to? Can you explore or please explore more option? I enrich marriages, not break marriages. Although there has been situations where I would just tell them to please, especially when it involves domestic violence. I'm not a fan of Jerry Eze's ministry. Sorry. But I listened to his marital testimony. Oh my God. The woman was very destructive. The anger issue was just too much. But the husband never gave up on her. Oh, he was consistent. Oh, he stood by her. Oh, he recognized that this is not ordinary. He looked at it like this is not ordinary. He stayed. And look at them today. Practically together. <laughs> Always together. Doing great for each other. I want to beg you this morning. Fight a little harder. Try. Explore more options. Seek help. I say it and I say it all the time. There is no situation that is beyond repair. But then, the two people that are involved must be willing. And we have situations whereby the other person, they are willing but they cannot just help. Their childhood trauma, they don't know when they are loved, even when you're loving them rightly. They just don't want to change. They are so adamant and yet they don't want to lose the relationship. But if you understand, if you've never been to any form of, I mean, if you understand how to help them to be more patient, to be more understanding, to be more tolerant, why not stay and fight for that marriage? I mean, give it the best of your best shot. If you're listening to me today and you're at that edge of moving on, 
please don't move on to become a, an option to someone else you're still a priority where you are right now work on that it is not everyone that will be fortunate to find a better spouse after their first marriage not everyone will be fortunate to get a better person please fight other pray other strategize other try other book an appointment with me let's talk let's see how we can work on that marriage let's see how we can work on that situation let's see how we can make it better do not move on to become an option to someone else please remember you can connect with me via my facebook you can connect with me uh, via instagram if you can follow me on instagram you can follow me everywhere and i have a link in my bio to book an appointment with me one word ibis love heaven on instagram thank you have everything god bless you bye for now thank you ibis welcome back viewers if you're just tuning in and you like what you've heard so far we we'll encourage you to hit the like button if you want to be a part of the family subscribe to the channel and you would and switch on your notification bell so that whenever we are live and we have new content you will be the first to know so we are going to we're going to jump into the conversation. We're going to jump into the conversation and try to avoid Sabi. I will go to a mem. <laughs> <laughs> Sabi, I beg you. So, a mem, you've had Ibis and all her words of wisdom about moving on and how relationships should work. So, what's your take? Oh, forgive me. I, can you hear? So, um, like she rightly said, you can decide to move on and move on wrong. And you can decide to move on and move on right, right? Because you can move on and it's all good for you. You find the man of your dream who loves you and cherishes you and everything. And you can move on and still meet another coconut head, you know. And it's going to be very, very difficult for you to now say, oh, should I stay back? Or should I continue? So if you know that the marriage you are in is just a matter of maybe communication and it's something that you can actually work out, I think, like she said, it's it's good to stay back and work out because for me, the essence of marriage really is companionship, especially when we get old and the children are out of the house. You know, it's, it's not going to be okay to be all alone, especially when you know that, oh, your spouse is living somewhere happily with someone else, you know, and you're just alone. So if it's something you can work out, why not? If it's something you cannot work out, well, it's up to you. But then again, it's not always greener on the other side. So you might as well just water your garden. Thank you. I hope that sounded so good. I feel so proud. <laughs> You sounded really good. You sound like, like a marriage counselor. <laughs> Savvy, oh, what's God. your take on what Ivy said? <laughs> oh, okay. Before I share my take on what Ivy said, let me share my take on what MM said. <laughs> <laughs> the ca the marriage counselor. <laughs> <laughs> our marriage counselor, our overstabbing marriage counselor. Now, <laughs> alone does not equate to lonely, right? You can be alone and be good. Sometimes, sometimes you can be real, you can be yoked to the wrong person. So it's better for you to be alone. If being alone will be better for you. Now, my take on what our dear coach, um, coach Ibi said, I'm not um. So there's this saying, there's no, that I follow a, a, a woman, I don't want to mention her name on Instagram. They say, this is just, she's always saying like covenant of life supersedes covenant of marriage. Don't forget that in heaven, there's no marriage. So if it is not working, it's not a must. And for that you are moving on, it does not mean that you are moving on to marry another person. You can move on and be alone, right? 
after after all, Paul, I, I am there apostle Paul in the Bible. I'm not being religious. Say so that <laughs> if you can be alone, it's good to be alone. So it, even if you move on, you don't even have to be one to another person. And you don't have to stay yoked because you want to be married, because maybe you are afraid in your old age. No, no, please. Just, you know, just do what is best for you, for your mental health, for your destiny. For See, marriage, uh, marriage is difficult. And I don't know how people do marriage, but I don't think it should be, it should be a matter of life or death. Like, oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to move on. No, if it's not working, you try your best and it's not working. Please, respect. You. With all due respect, move on. And that's my team. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sabi. <laughs> Before I go on to AY, viewers, our lines are open. We would love to hear your take on this matter. Are you going with Team MM or you're going with Team Sabi? <laughs> we would like to hear your take and drop your comments also or questions, whatever you have to say. We'd like to have a conversation with you. So, AY, over to you. What's your take? Let me stretch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, hmm? it's easier said than done. But just for um, disclaimer, if your house is currently a boxing field or a wrestling field, um, please exit before someone's head gets hit on the wall and someone dies. That's number one. Never. I am not an advocate for staying in an abusive marriage, even if that was the first time he did it. Now, that being said, marriage is not the ultimate award for a woman. No. Neither is it the ultimate award for a man. We choose to get married because we want to. And if it's no longer fitting into what gives you sanity, happiness, and joy? There's always a door. I'm not pushing anyone. I'm not pushing for someone to leave their marriage. But I'm just saying that your mental health, your well-being, your happiness, your joy is the top priority. You cannot give love that you don't have to someone else. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to take breaks. I know in my culture where we are coming from, a woman cannot say, I need a break. But because we are all civilized and we're in a civilized country now, I, I push for people to take breaks. If you can afford it, take a week apart, go and work on yourself and come back together. If, we, if you need more than a week, do that also. But marriage is not by force. We all do it because we want to, even though that, you know, it's, it's ordained by God for religious reasons for us to come together. But even in that same word of God, happiness, joy, so precedes all of these things. So if someone is affecting you from being able to be the authentic person that God has created you to be, then, and the person is not willing to go to therapy, the person is not willing to work on themselves, they are just coconut head. They, in their village, they don't used to go to therapy. In their village, they don't used to communicate. In their village, they don't used to do this. <laughs> it's for four fathers. Is in his four, 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 four fathers did not go to therapy, so therefore he's not going to therapy. Then you need to, you know, look within yourself and see what works for you. Um, what works for me might not work for Izo, might not work for Amen, might not work for Savvy. It's an individual thing. But if you are in the right. wrestling field or a punching match, auntie or uncle carry your bag and exit. Men do get abused also, so. I'm not speaking for just the woman, men, women, if it's mm -hmm. not working, if it's physical, if someone's constantly throwing something at you, carry your small bag and take a break from the relationship. So I don't think I'm either team savvy or team MM at this point. I'm team do you <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm not, am I in it? Why is there a team self? I don't like uh, this one. I like, I like trouble. <laughs> I like I like trouble. That's why you love problem. You love problem. You pass trouble. I like trouble. <laughs> and, and let's and let's not forget that abuse can come in different ways. It doesn't have to be physical. It, it could be financial. It could be you know just be good. All right, okay. ladies, we 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 have to wrap this up because we have the main topic for today. Uh, thank you for your take, your perspective. 
Again, our viewers would like to hear from you. I'm not going to call Tim because Tim is becoming something that is a violent thing now. So <laughs> we'd like to hear your views on this subject matter. We'll go on a short break. And then when we come back, we'll take the main topic for today. Don't go anywhere. You really want to know what the topic is. Yes, James Brown the soul singer of the 70s and the 60s said it is a man's world but is it really the society and the pressure it puts on the man sometimes make us wonder because there's so much expectation and it begs the question what does it really take to be a man so our topic today says does the world hate men now, from the video clip you just saw, that was a social experiment where a lady was acting as though she was being impressed by a guy, and you could see people rush to her aid. Someone even fought the other guy. But when they turned the tables, and then this time around, she was the one physically abusing the man, Nobody came to their rescue. As a matter of fact, if you watch the video, you see people smiling and some people wondering, is this, is this a skit? Is this for real? So why does the world hate men? That's our topic for today. So we'd like to hear your take. Do you think the world hate men or you don't think they hate men? So, uh, but before we get your calls, we will get to talking about this. So what do you guys think? Hey, why? from the video what's your take do you think that that's reality or nah it's not always the case um it's some sort of reality that we've found ourselves over the years i think that video is probably also old um and i think we're more in the age where now people are proactively people are proactively helping each other after they finish recording because the new thing is you know they have to catch for the gram first then they will interject mm -hmm. that's the gen z thing right but i feel like if that was done more recently it probably would have not played out that way i think people are speaking up more for each other more so because mental health is a very very known topic now and that it affects men and women equally. So I think I mentioned it last week that I would like to see this same experiment on um, a, on a different race and see how it, um, it will play out. I don't think it will play out the same way just because we've seen in, I mean, all over where black men don't get the same kind of love and respect that mm -hmm. um our caucasian brothers and sisters you know do but i'm a bit i'm a bit I'm, I'm not too comfortable with the fact that saying that do men um do the world hate men because from the country where me i am from eh the one way i come from the world love men there the men are the are the odobus there they are the kings so mm. it's hard for me to wrap my head around it coming from a place where men are dominant they are well respected they um they speak their mind yeah, so I, something Christ. happened to me at the airport <laughs> right something happened to us at the airport when i went i traveled last year um when we arrived immigration was talking to you know you go through the whole process and you get to the baggage area when you need to leave and the the custom guy um was initially asking me questions and i was answering the questions and when it got to the point where he wanted to ask for money he pulled my husband to the side to go and have that conversation with the man unfortunately for him the augusto now brought him back to me that madame is the one that has the money in her boss and you can see in his face like the disappointment of a woman so it's hard for me to wrap my head around it in the western world when 
you know, they say, you know, men are, you know, they're, they're not being respected. I'm like, you guys need to take a trip to Nigeria, but that's my take. Okay. So let me, let me, let me, uh, give an example. Statistics shows that there are more female marketers than male marketers. So if you were a business, uh, maybe you own uh, a business company and a lady walks into your company with a product, there's this, I don't know if the word is empathy that you would show that, okay, let me listen, let me help, let me be of assistance. But oftentimes when you see a male with that same product, you're like, we don't want to buy anything. (laughs) We're good. (laughs) So that's that kind of pressure where people defer to the woman because they think, oh, she's feminine, she's weak, we want to help her, we want to rally, uh, rally around her. But the man doesn't get that same treatment when placed in that same scenario. So there's more expectation, more pressure on the man. I think that's, uh, so amen, let me come to you now. (laughs) So if we're looking at it through that prism, do you think uh, the men are more pressured with expectations to meet up targets, you know, family and stuff than the women? The joy ride. go back i'm just gonna go back a little bit you know somehow god created man and woman and he knew what he did and when man fell um he said that man will toil the earth meaning man will work very hard to get his money and for the women we have our own punishment that was administered unto us (laughs) now when we say does the world hate men i feel um if it was just the women hating on the men then of course, that's debatable. We'll say, okay, maybe they did something. But are we also including the men hating themselves as well? Mm-hmm. Mm. Right? I think so it's the, the system is, we're talking about, not just one gender hating the other. Well, the system is is made up of both male and female. It, it's not just existing mm-hmm. on its own, really. So I feel like something has been placed to, like you said, make women the weaker sex. And that is why help seems to seems to come for her more than it comes for the man because men are seen to be strong you don't cry you know you have to suck it up take things feel like a man be a man and it is actually the men that make this statement really because i can tell you for sure that men really don't have friends that when they are going through emotional and mental issues that they will just call and say brother I'm going through that emotional and mental stress. Your friend will not understand what you're saying. Your friend will say, guy, come off it. Come on, you're a man. Let's go and do 17, um, what's it called? 1759 outside. Let's go and drink some bottles. Do you understand? I don't think they sit down to actually have those conversations. So I, I, I should now ask the men, are you that friend that actually, you know, bring yourself out to be there? I'm talking about in terms of prayer in terms of having a listening ear rather than telling your mm-hmm. friend to be the man be the man because when you're talking about hate it's not just we're still going to bring in gender really do you understand are you trying to say that the men also hate themselves because who created the system we did we are the system mm-hmm. we created what we are seeing right so are we also saying that men hate themselves as well so when we say the world the mm-hmm. world comprises of both male and female and i can tell you that men are also part of their problem Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> okay, I'm coming, <laughs> I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you, Sabi. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to the video before you speak. I want you to speak okay. now on the video when the woman started beating the man. Did you notice the looks on other men's face? So I'm tying what Amem said to what you probably are going to say. So is it that men don't believe that they are pressured? So men, if I'm wrong, call me or call on the show. We are waiting for you to call. (laughs) So so do you think that men don't think that they are pressured? Because obviously that guy was in a state of distress and his own fellow Mm. men did not come to his aid. So when we were talking about the, why does the world hate men? Are we actually saying men hate men? Or what, what's your take? Let me hear you go. So, 
Okay, so we just decided to play a little bit of the video again for our viewers so that they can see the reference I'm making. You can see the lady slapping on the man, shoving him and everything. And there was a guy on the far back that even had a smirk on his face wondering what kind of, uh, <laughs> is this a skit or what? So am I even smiling? So are the men hating mm -hmm. the men or what, Savvy? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think I think the one that's even funny to me the most in their clip was the guy that, you know, you didn't even know what was happening and you joined, and you joined the woman to beat up the guy. I was like, I was like, dude, what's your problem? You don't going on. But that's it. Um, so there's this preconception, like if something if something like like then automatically the man is at fault because it's not seen as a normal thing for um for a woman to be abusing a man. Not about those world men. I don't I don't think so because if if he yeah, wouldn't be talking about then if if the answer to that question is yes, then gender pay inequality will not be a thing. Whereas they won't even be discussing it because everything will be the same we know we'll not be talking about there, there won't be need for um feminism or, or anything like that because everyone will be seen as equal now i think the men themselves they put pressure on themselves they see they think that to show yourself as being vulnerable they see vulnerability as a sign of weakness which is not um supposed to be you know you see men they don't want to go to therapy. They think, oh, why do I, do I why, sh no, I'm okay. Why, why would I go and sit down and be talking about my stuff to, to somebody, you know? I think the men say that they need to condition themselves. I think, I think it's conditioning, both on the part of the men majorly to think that they are supposed to be the alpha and omega, supposed to be somebody that is not faced by life, um, life happenings. Life happens to us, to us all, and it's okay to react. You know, we are human beings. We have blood flowing in our veins. The blood, like if I see this blood, if they draw blood from somebody, they, I'm not going to ask if the blood is for a female or a, or, a, or a male person. So why are we thinking, oh, as a man, um, when I'm going through stuff, I shouldn't talk. If I, if, I, if I say something, I'll be perceived as being weak, as being as being a um, a boy boy, like they were saying my my language. As if you are um like you are like you are not a, you are not the master of your own house right so i don't know i don't think the world it's men the men themselves they should um they should all call themselves to a meeting and decide <laughs> and... <laughs> to call themselves to a meeting <laughs> all <laughs> men all over the world we have a meeting by five <laughs> they call themselves to a meeting and you know set an agenda that it's okay to it's, even if you are weak it's okay to be weak it's and it's going to be for a season you're not going to be weak forever you're not going to be vulnerable forever so in that season embrace whatever it is that is happening that season it's all right you know mm, mm, mm. <laughs> well this is what i think i think so i want to put it in compartments i don't want it to be a one size fits all there are, there are certain aspects of our system that comes across as though the men are at the short end of the stick, because let's just call it what it is, uh, where they, even in our, in our home country where the, there's, there's a male dominancy, there are certain things that men are expected to do that kind of puts pressure on the man especially when it comes to providing and surviving in the marketplace because people tend to feel that okay women need help women need support so when it, when i don't know how to phrase this now but i think when it comes to the marketplace there's a lot of pressure on the man and like you said because they don't have this community around themselves where they can divulge or discuss or seek counsel they internalize everything and the pressure just built. I want to hammer, I want to hammer, I want to hammer. But we, the women, we have a community. When you are choked up, you have your girlfriend to talk with. You have ways to let out steam. So the men do not have that. Or I don't know if it's that they don't have that or it's not, it's not natural 
for them to just, you know, let off steam and protect their mental health in that regard. They feel that it is a sign of weakness for you to show that, oh, I'm crying or this thing is okay. Let me use, let me use a very good example that just came to mind now. There's a preacher, uh, I won't call his name, but I was listening to him talk about the very first time they built their church. You know, they are taking it up to a level. It wasn't, there, there was no roof on it. Then the whole building collapsed. The mm. building collapsed that day. He came home. He didn't say anything to the wife. The wife asked him how was his day. He said it was fine. The wife gave him his dinner. He ate the dinner, went to bed, cried his eyes out that night. And then he said it was in the morning next, the next day that he just casually, oh, the church building fell. So most men see it as a sign of weakness for them to show that vulnerability, actually maybe to a spouse or even to their fellow man. So he was able to vent his own in the privacy of his room and then he was feeling better. What if he's the type of man that believes I should also not cry, even inside my closet? So he carries that pressure and that expectation that I've failed or whatever, and it builds up. So I think that when it comes to the marketplace, the men create pressures for themselves or the system makes them feel that, oh, uh, you have to be a man. But in certain aspects also, it's not the case. The women are under pressure in some sense, because like you talked about, there's this uh, inequality of payment in the workplace also where they'll say, oh, he's a man, he has a family, he should earn more than the woman that's doing the same job. So I don't think the world hates men. I just feel that the system in some, in some, in some climes will favor the man. But in some other climbs, it doesn't. Somebody's hand is up. Okay, ma'am. Me, me, I'm What's shaking my take? head. Me, I'm shaking my head, please. <laughs> I don't want anybody to come to my WhatsApp and tell me, you people are only talking about, you're always supporting women only. You don't support men. Men, this is the time for you to call and talk to us because this is about you. It's about your matter. And there is no better way to address this I address it, you know, if we don't hear from you, yeah. right? Now, I'm going to say that there are men that actually go through domestic violence. And yeah. these men, I trust me, like when you see them outside with their wife and everything, you can tell that they are doing whatever it takes to like protect their family or not to let the world know that they are dying in silence. But when that man speaks and says, oh, my wife used to hit me, my wife... You will hear things like, yeah, you, ha, ha, come on, come off it. Are you not a man? What do you mean? How woman go, they beat you? How can a woman beat you? But it is very, very, very disappointing that men don't have that um, protection around them. Now, I know that, yes, I said it, it, they are part of their problem. But at the same time, is it that the powers that be, and when I talk about the powers that be, we can also say that men actually have more power than women in this world. Are they trying to use the feminism or the femininity of a woman to attack the man? I don't know how it plays. It's more like somebody is fighting against his own gender just to remain where he is. I don't know if you understand what I mean, right? So mm -hmm. a man who suffers from domestic violence, and you will see a fellow man tell him, no, don't allow people to hear, to, to hear that thing outside. <laughs> Why? <laughs> As a man, are you going to tell me that you've told your brother, your friend before, as your friend said, see what I'm going to do. He said, come, let us pray. I have had this argument <laughs> with a man before. And he said, it is not his friend's position. It is not his friend's um, um, duty to pray for him. That prayer is for his mother and his wife to be. That was what a man <laughs> told The people that caused so if you're having, you know, <laughs> if you're having conversations like this, there are men, there are men that are suffering domestic violence. There are men that have been cheated and ripped off by women do you understand but when they come out to speak nobody is fighting for them i i can even tell you that it's even a woman that will even come out and say ah this one is not good though i don't like this but a fellow man will tell him ah don't let them hear you please guy man up man up <laughs> nothing they happen let's go and drink beer my men supporting men so, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so you know you know um it's, it's just said something right 
I met a Y um on a WhatsApp group for women, and you know, in, on this group we have a no holds bad conversation, right? Nothing is off the table. Now I remember the day that um, in fact, as a matter of fact, I got my first job in Canada. That group, right? So I remember there was a time I think three or four years ago somebody mentioned on the WhatsApp group that oh, our husband is very like very much likes the group because there's nothing you ask for on that group is it on job issue you have interview is it market run we discuss about pepe you know we I, the people they are very resourceful so the guy the, the, the lady now said that oh my husband is asking do we have this kind of group for <laughs> for men men like and i remember i don't think so but your husband can start it because we have men you know you also you also need your community well my dear sisters in the Lord, as I will say, <laughs> as we speak, we still don't have any any group like that, right? Mm -mm. And and us, we are we are we are doing we are we are making power moves. We are doing big things, you know. People are getting jobs. They are being referred, you know, serious things. But you even to small group where you just be talking about things. Soccer. No, he had for you. <laughs> <laughs> so well to your point. Okay, to your point, uh, I know that we've had several men call on this show. And now uh, we're talking about something that borders on men's mental health and their well-being and if the system is unfair to them. And suddenly they've all gone quiet. So <laughs> men are not very good. <laughs> they are not very it's good at divulging now. their inner feelings. So whatever conclusions we reach on today, uh, you can't blame us on the show because we gave you a fair ground to come and uh, say your bit, but we're yet to hear anything. Anyway, I know your hand was up, so I'll allow you go. <laughs> so I'm going to blame you, Izo. I'm going to blame <laughs> going you, to... Savi. I'm going to blame you, uh, Imem, and I'm going to blame our mothers, and I'm going to blame all our grandmothers. They are the creator of this problem that we are talking about because i can imagine a five-year-old falling down and probably hitting his leg and he's crying stop, 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 stop crying men don't cry well, what do you mean why are you crying be quiet you just wipe your face and if the girl falls if the girl child falls down and the, the girl child falls down and it's oh did you scrape your leg oh sorry um let mommy help you put a band-aid on it and from there then it becomes also um, men. Men. Men are not allowed to 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 show public, you know, all of these things. Oh my goodness! We have a caller. Sorry. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Oh, a man. A man. A man. A man. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Please, what's your name? And where are you calling from? My name is Omo, calling from Saskatoon. Hi, Omo. Nice to have you on the show. Please go ahead. Thomas. Yeah. Uh, the, the fact remains that when uh, women uh, see anything that is happening, uh, when a woman is misbehaving, we see it <laughs> as uh, somebody using her own hand to destroy her own home so that's why you see men are always quiet when it comes to that uh, this kind of issue when you see women uh, abusive women men decide to keep quiet because even though when you tell it to other men they'll just look over it and say let's go and take some drinks so because of that you don't uh, like men that doesn't drink they might not like to associate with that with, food, with friends that drinks because anything that a man that drinks takes, whatsoever that happens after any alcohol or you are known to take alcohol, whatsoever that happens to the man, they say, don't mind him, he's a drunk. Maybe he was drunk. Mm. So because mm. of that, that's the reason men stay out of alcohol. And they don't associate with men that drink alcohol, except those that take alcohol associate with men that take alcohol. 
they can easily call them. Let's go and take, uh, let's go and just take some bottle to while away the time. But for men, as a family man, when a woman is misbehaving, you see the woman just with her own hand destroying her own home, destroying her own future. Because a man that has paid your bright price, that you have children for, and you think you can disgrace him, abuse him, being abusive, he won't say anything. Any other man that tells you you are beautiful, you are lovely, you are this, you are that, he's just a scam. After it can only last for a while. And after a while, he knows that the same way you treat the first husband, the father of your children, that's the same way you are going to treat him. So he doesn't have anything, nothing at stake. At the, when you get to age 50, 60, then that's when the true marriage comes in. Not at the age of 25, 30, 40, no. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. you now see, the man that you are troubling with that you don't want to sleep with him on the same bed, then you'll be looking for someone to occupy that bed you won't see. And that same <laughs> man, he doesn't mind. He can go and carry any other woman. He knows that the, this woman is just his scam. He will carry the woman to come and live with him. But the children that you are thinking that they are keeping you busy at younger age, they will graduate. They are seeing the way their mother is treating their father. When they grow, they finish their school. They will go far away to go and seek for a job. And they will marry. They will place their wife Mr. there. Thomas, when you are coming for Mr. a visit, they will buy tickets to and fro for you. Mr. As Thomas, a special, can I ask you a question? A time frame, two weeks, one week. After then, you go back. This is my own home. So Mr. Then, Thomas, the Mr. woman Thomas. will know that the woman will not say, Ah, I carried you for uh, nine months. I breastfeed you for one year. This that I don't <laughs> I train you at this that I... Mr. Thomas it is not true Mr. Thomas. because whatsoever you do in the presence of children, they are watching. You don't think that you can be abusive today. The man that has paid Thomas. the bride price, you do you know what he has gone through for a man Mr. to do Thomas. such. He has done more than enough. Mr. No Thomas. matter how the man is struggling. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas. Hello. I don't. I think we. I think we lost him. I was going to ask him. I think he's talking based on the IB's video on moving on from relationship. I yeah. I was going to ask him quickly. Switch over to asking him how does he feel about men you know, going to therapy and having like a brotherhood kind of committee to to help each other out during these times. And back to what I was quickly saying, because I know we are running out of time. Okay, um, we're running out about... of time, but we have more calls. So let's quickly take that. Oh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Welcome uh, to the show. My name, can you hear me? I can hear yes. you loud and clear. Yes, sir. The the baritone okay, is baritone, yes. sir. As in, <laughs> okay. We like when men call. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Good. Go ahead. Uh, May we know your name you. and? Uh, you... Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Tell us your name, and then you can give us your perspective on the topic. Okay, my name is Lenny, and I'm calling from Saskatoon. Uh, first, I would want to appreciate um, the program so far. Uh, you guys have been doing great with uh, the program all this while. Now, to the topic, basically, if the world hates men or not, it, I think, first and foremost, we'll have to put them all into different perspective. Um uh, um, first, we have to look at in what aspect. Is it financial? Is it mentally? Is it uh, basically on all aspects that has to do with uh, spouse or in all the cases, right? I think one of the things that is very key is um, the culture where we grew up under, right? Um, certain culture puts certain expectations on you, like they expect that uh, you should you should not cry, like uh, M M said, or 
that uh, moderator said, you can't cry you, even if you're dying or whatever. Your guys would be like, oh, then don't cry. Let's go have a beer, which is most likely true in most cases. Uh, but one of the things I'd like to mention is when you look at the people that you want to try to confine in or you, you're trying to look for a place to have to or express how you actually feel, most of the people you get to talk with do not have the capacity to understand what you're talking about, right? So you're, you're left with the whole scenario where you're thinking in a space of your own where nobody seems to connect to that Piece where you are in, right? And it could it could bother on finances. So you your income is not enough, and you're thinking to yourself, how do you make ends meet? Now, when you're trying to talk with somebody else regarding that, the person is either saying, "Man, just hustle hard, work hard, look for something, look for something." It, the question is not look for something. The guy knows that he needs to look for something. The question is, how does he get that something? In court, and mm. so it, it's all about first and foremost who is even who are you talking to? Does the person have the for guys? we like, who are we going to be talking to? Does the person have the capacity to help? So instead of the person, instead of us just going to talk to everybody and become an everybody's topic in court, because that's another part that is very key. Most times, when men confine in anybody, they expect that the person should be able to give them solutions to that situation where they're in without necessarily turning it into a community affair, right? Because not everybody wants their their men naturally do not like their affairs in the public space. They like to keep them issues within themselves. So if they're talking to somebody and the person is not able to offer them any solution but turns it into a community affair, they become more withdrawn and decide to deal with their issues anyhow it turns out, right? That is one aspect to it. And so sometimes they, they could actually be going through mental torture over certain things that they do not necessarily agree with, but there's no readily available help, you know? And then again, it comes down to even to relating to females or even relating to males about what you want to talk about and then there's also the pressure like um Ezo mentioned that we come on now necessarily and there are certain expectations that people by reason of the lifestyle or the things that they expect in quote or the life that they intend to want to enjoy they tend to put all of those pressures without indirectly knowing they're putting those pressures on the man, the man is under that impression that, okay, for example, this is what my partner expects mm-hmm. her life to be like. Oh, yeah. this is what my my mother expects my life to be like. Oh, my mm-hmm. friend has 10 cars. Oh, this is the expectations. Uh, sometimes you hear some females say, you know, they see your mates. Permit my pigeon English. <laughs> your mates to do this one. Your mates to do that one. Your Thank you one. so much. And, uh, and then, I'm going to then, have to yeah, jump then. into um, your conversation, and I'm really sorry about this. I'm notorious on this show for interrupting people, so please bear with me. <laughs> we have overshot our time, and um, we need to wrap things up so i'll just get a final word from you and then i'll take final words from all my co-hosts go ahead lenny just final words are you still there oh it's like i ran him off i'm so oh i lost him i lost him i'm so sorry lenny but i had to wrap up the show <laughs> call back need to bring next back. sunday please please <laughs> okay so we'll go around the house <laughs> <laughs> we'll go around the house AY then Amen and then Savi AY take it away so my last thought on this is for us our generation let's just do better for our male child teach them to be vulnerable teach them to be you know to, to have some kind of softness to them that the world is not on their shoulder and their partners should always be their partner 
and yeah that's that's it stay audacious everyone and have a lovely week okay imam over to you yeah for me there is no challenge that you're going through that someone else hasn't passed through so it's okay to learn from people's mistakes and and you know move on and be kind to yourself you don't have all the burden on your shoulders like just be kind please okay stay safe wonderful savvy over to you yeah so as you go this week you know a lot of us we extend grace to other people so this i just want to encourage us to extend the same grace to ourselves okay have a great week everyone all righty and from me i would just like to put on the top of what our last caller said that look for professional help if you don't have people among your community that you can confide in look for professional help the people that are trained especially in canada you can go to them tell them what your issues are they will be able to guide you if it's professionally in the workplace or if it's relationally in maybe your relationships and so on and then uh, you need to decompress. You need to keep your mental health in check. You can't solve all the problem by yourself and you need help. So look for help. Help is important. I want to thank our producers. We're sorry we overshot the time. Viewers, thank you always for always sticking with us. I always live with this. Life is for the living. Bye for now. Enjoy the solar eclipse, Canada. <laughs> <laughs>